Action one, uh, we believe that uh, there needs to be a child and very importantly, family-centered uh, early detection and care coordination entity in every single U.S. state. One of the models for this is the state of Connecticut, which has done just an excellent job of early detection and care coordination. To kind of give you an example, in the state of Connecticut, they have very strict criteria for which children receive early intervention services under the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act, Part C. So even though they have strict criteria, they have double the number of children receiving early intervention services compared to other states with the exact same numerical definitions for which children receive services. So why is that? It's because of the Help Me Grow program, uh, I believe. And that is a, a program that at a statewide level is really focusing on the early detection of problems and care coordination. Why is care coordination important? Because we have studies now, mostly coming from the Philadelphia metropolitan area, that if you uh, don't have care coordination, and a pediatrician like me refers a kid with a positive developmental screen, you know, that shows concerns, about 50% of the time, that's what the data is showing all across the country, 50% of the time you're going to get that child linked to the early intervention agency. So there's a lot of kids who just are being filtered out, they're being kicked back, the parents are saying, now I don't have concerns, they can't find their phone number, there's many reasons. But if you have a care coordination piece, you can bump that number up to about 80%. So there's good solid data here that care coordination is a key piece of this puzzle. Action number two is a comprehensive, tiered, equitable approach to assessing developmental behavioral needs and corresponding supports. What does that mean? Comprehensive, that word means that we, when a child is referred to an early intervention agency, they need to be looking at all the developmental domains most importantly, the social-emotional domain. And uh, I don't know if that's really being done uh, well enough uh, across the country. Um, tiered means that not every kid is, quite frankly, going to get the same evaluation. You know, if it's uh, a child with a little speech delay, a little expressive speech delay, they just might need a low-cost, mid-level assessment. But if it's a child who's high risk on the revised MCHAT, that child, would, which is an autism-specific screening tool, if it's that child, that's going to need a more in-depth assessment. So a tiered level to the assessment, not just one size fits all. And then equitable, what does that mean? That means that there needs to be a nationwide definition for what is a developmental delay or what is an at-risk child in the 0-5 period. Currently in the United States of America, there are 22 different numerical definitions for what is a developmental delay. So if you grow up in the state of Massachusetts and the pediatrician refers you to early intervention, chances are really good you're going to get services. And in the state of Massachusetts, about 7% of their children for uh, zero to three years are, guess what, receiving early intervention services. If you grow up in the state of Arizona or Missouri or Georgia, it's tough. You know, they have about 1.5% of children zero to three years of age receiving early intervention services. So there's wide variability in uh, the definitions for who should receive services. And we believe that the definition should be based on evidence and a little bit of expert opinion to kind of fill in the gaps because the evidence is, you know, it's, it's always changing and we need expert guidance. So that's uh, action two. Action three is uh, we felt like timely access to high quality tiered early intervention for both delayed and, very importantly, at-risk children in the United States of America, but there's about seven states that do a good job of serving that group of at-risk kids. The rest of them are just kind of really looking for who's really behind, you know, two standard deviations below the mean. Timely means, like, timely. In, like, in one, two months, we want to get those kids services. And tiered means that we believe that there should be a pyramid approach that any child who's referred to an early intervention agency should be getting some sort of proven intervention. And then there's a mid-level group, you know, a child who maybe has a speech delay and the mother is low income and depressed. Now that child is, you're not going to only do speech therapy for that kid, it's not going to work well enough. You're also going to have to address the other issue, which is the mother who has depression and help her and have a more family-centered approach to this. 
and not be afraid to confront that issue. Action 4 is a universal access to high quality uh, early learning or peak preschool programs. I want to begin by kind of giving you an idea of what's going on in our county. In Lane County, there are 70 slots open for the early Head Start program. So I, I will routinely call up the director and say, can I get this kid in? And there's only 70 slots. That's not enough. There are 2,500 or more eligible children at any given point in time. So you can only imagine the waiting list for an early Head Start program, which, by the way, is probably is proven to work better than the Head Start program because it's you know tackling these kids who come from disadvantaged families at an earlier age. The Head Start program needs to improve its quality. Um, right now, I'd say about. 40 to 50 percent of, of preschools are good or excellent, and the rest of them are not. So we need to kind of, just like the Netherlands, just like Scandinavia, really look at the quality of these preschool programs and then provide those proven interventions that, that these kids deserve. Um, and action number five, and this is my final point here, is there was a lot of discussion in our expert panel about we have to have an outcome. We can't just not have an outcome because we need to measure this. We need to make sure that this process is working. What, is our, what are going to be our outcomes? And so we, we said that we really need continuous accountability for the early detection and intervention process. So this is looking at, from a statewide level, the percentage of children who are being screened as recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the percentage of people or children who are being appropriately referred for a positive screening result, and the percentage of kids who are who were referred by a pediatrician or a family practitioner to an early intervention, early intervention agency, and then are actually linked to the early intervention agency. So we want to look at all those numbers, and some of them might be too difficult to track. But then we also proposed, and this was the big one, we feel like every child needs to have a fairly low cost mid-level assessment of their developmental and social-emotional status at five years upon kindergarten entrance. And because if we did that across the board, uh, we, don't, we don't think they need a gold standard evaluation that's very expensive, but something more mid-level. So when you enter kindergarten, you get an assessment. And to kind of give it, you an idea of where, where you're at, and then we could track that same assessment over time and make sure that we're improving things for children and truly preventing developmental disabilities, or at least ameliorating that, and, it's, and men, mental health disorders too. That as me as a pediatrician, um, boy, I feel like I'm being flooded by children who have mental health problems and developmental disabilities. There's just so many of them. It's overwhelming. Something has to be done. So that, that was all I had to say. Thank you. Questions for Kevin? Yes. What's it going to cost? What's it going to cost? Uh, that is an unknown. We don't know, but we do know that um, there's been some economists who have looked at the issue, and they uh, see it from an investment perspective. And uh, a U.S. A council of economists have said that for every one dollar that you invest in this type of program, you're going to get about $8.60 of a return rate for it.